without a voice. We should still be actively knowing what is happening in our community around policing. Why some living in Aurora feel like they've been excluded from the process of hiring a new police chief. We challenge the city of Aurora to slow down, stop the process now. Florida braces for Hurricane Ian. This is going to impact everyone in different ways. I'm tracking where the storm will hit and when. Making money off murder. It's a thriving business. True crime fascination, giving rise to one of the darkest markets imaginable. True crime became sort of my, uh, my hobby and it's turned into a business. Tonight, Denver 7 investigates is shedding light on murderabilia and how this industry is allowing people to make a killing on crime. I'm a firm believer in free enterprise, but I think you got to draw the line somewhere. First tonight, frustrations in Aurora as the city closes in on hiring a new police chief. Last week, the city revealed two finalists for the job, Scott Ebner with New Jersey State Police and David Franklin with the Albuquerque Police Department. As Denver 7's Rob Harris is learning, some community members feel they haven't been given a voice in the hiring process. Yeah, and the discussions tonight stayed civil, but there were some tough questions for the two men who could become Aurora's next police chief. But there were also some very passionate community members who made it a point to not be at the meeting tonight. We are appalled at the process. These are members of the Aurora Police Oversight Committee. They held a press conference outside the Aurora Municipal Center because most plan to skip the meet and greet with finalists in protest. We will no longer sit by and allow this to continue. Reinstate the task force immediately and stop this process as it is unjust and it is undemocratic. We want to know who was on that committee that brought it down to three people and now down to two. What is the process and why were we not involved? A few dozen members of the Aurora community did come out to attend the meet and greet itself. Anybody, did you question the hiring? The two finalists were asked how they plan to hold officers accountable, increase diversity in the ranks, and build trust with the community. To have this forum to sit here and meet and greet anyone that wants to come in and talk to us from, from the community is extremely important. There's a lot of work needs to be done, you know, and uh, something not to take lightly. Lindsay Minter was one of the only members of the oversight committee to attend the meet and greet. You can't criticize a process that you haven't been a part of. She says she had good conversations with the two finalists. But at the end of the day, she's still calling for the city of Aurora to scrap the process and start over. Let us have an actual constructive part and role in selecting our police chief. Now, according to the city of Aurora, both finalists will interview with the mayor and members of the Aurora City Council tomorrow. Live in Aurora, I'm Rob Harris, Denver 7. Rob, thank you. Tonight, Hurricane Ian is creeping closer to Florida. This is a live look from Fort Myers, which is already seeing rain and wind from the storm as it strengthens in the Gulf of Mexico. Ian made landfall in Cuba earlier today as a Category 3 hurricane, knocking out power to the entire island and devastating tobacco farms. Forecasters say Ian could grow to a Category 4 storm by the time it makes landfall in Florida. A state of emergency has been declared as Floridians begin to evacuate. Others are choosing to stay and ride out the storm. I'm not scared. I'm not. I'm prepared, though. I got three generators in my truck. I'm ready to rock and roll and come on. What's the name? Not Irma, but Ian. Come on, Ian. At airports across Florida are already closing ahead of Ian's arrival is, is Disney World in Orlando. And just this evening, President Biden spoke with Florida's governor saying the administration is ready to help. Let's bring in Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson now. And Mike, the big question I think is when and where in Florida? About 2 to 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon and it'll come in around the Fort Myers area. Uh, the storm is now out over very warm water in the Gulf and it is gradually strengthening. It's a strong category two right now. It will likely be a four by the time it approaches the Florida coast as that storm continues to move in. Now the area that you see in the red parallelogram, that is a tornado watch. They've already had a half a dozen tornadoes touching down in Florida as the spiral bands inspire swirling thunderstorms. As this moves on shore, it will cut right across central Florida and slow down. And so that not only means the danger from the storm surge, from the tornadoes, but also some areas may see two feet 
of rain from this storm over the next 48 hours. Thank you, Mike. And tonight, volunteers from Colorado are already on the ground in Florida, ready to help in the aftermath of Hurricane Ian. You can find that story right now over at Denver7.com. Investigators in Littleton say they are now looking at nearby surveillance cameras after a pipe bomb was found outside a Safeway. Police say the device was next to a dumpster this afternoon behind the store at West Mineral and South Broadway. A bomb squad was brought in and was able to disable that explosive. So if you know anything, Littleton police are asking you to give them a call. A renowned Colorado skier and mom missing in Nepal after reportedly falling near the top of one of the world's tallest mountains. And tonight, fellow athletes are holding on to hope that Hillary Nelson will be found safe. Here is Denver 7's call at Borderline. No matter where you are, it's hard not to be inspired by the place that we're at. Getting outside is meant for everyone. We are here to experience life, right? And who we see at the top of the mountains can make all the difference. As a young girl who was very interested in the outdoors, you know, there weren't a lot of female role models that we had to look up to. But an inspiration is found in the San Juan Mountains near Telluride, where Hillary Nelson calls home. Having a woman out there is, is the biggest game changer for me personally. Nelson, a ski climber, is the captain of the North Face athletic team and has a career spanning more than two decades packed with a number of accomplishments. Always there to, to give a thought or give encouragement. For athletes who know her, Nelson is described as the most humble leader you can imagine. You know, they say don't meet your heroes. Well, she's the type when you meet her, you're like, well, you deserve to be a hero because you're the real thing. But hearing the news, Nelson's missing after an apparent fall from the world's eighth tallest mountain has been devastating. I didn't sleep last night. I imagine a lot of people didn't sleep last night and we're still holding holding the torch that a miracle is possible. It can be hard to put into words what makes adventure so special. It's part of what makes living worthwhile. But the same can be said about the woman who gave countless others someone to look up to. Hillary has stood in places that very few people have stood. You know, if anyone can get out of something scary and hard, it's her. A woman who signifies the mountains for so many. It just shows that you can do it too, right? And who shows everyone anything is possible. Colette Bordelon, Denver 7. New tonight, we're getting our first look at the woman hit by a train as she sat inside a Platteville police car. The attorney for Yoreni Rios Gonzalez tells Good Morning America the whole thing never should have happened. She noticed the train horn and the train whistle um, and started to struggle. She was handcuffed, so she was struggling to try and open the door to get out. She tried frantically to get the officer's attention. It's incredibly dangerous to park on train tracks. That should have just never happened. Video released last week shows police putting Rios Gonzalez in the squad car as it was parked on the tracks and not reacting to trains horns in the time to get her to safety. Rios Gonzalez broke numerous bones and is back home from the hospital. You'll be able to watch more from her attorney's interview tomorrow morning on GMA. Thornton police say the man accused in last week's attempted abduction near a school will be back in court Thursday. Diego Gettler is in the Adams County Jail on a $10,000 bond. According to an affidavit, Gettler's own family turned him in. Police say Gettler tried to grab a 10-year-old student outside of STEM launch last Friday, and that 10-year-old was able to get away. A creepy industry thriving in the darkest corners of the Internet. Murder Billy is probably the, the strangest project I've ever encountered. People profiting off some of the most notorious murders. This is America, and people have a fascination with crime. Up next, I'm giving you an in-depth look at this morbid marketplace. People out here that want to feel some sort of connection to killers. Asking how is this legal? and are killers making money off their own crimes. It's like being gutted all over again by our criminal justice system. 